Hello, it's Alex. Welcome to my channel. Thanks so much for joining me. Today I'm going to be looking at uh, the kind of dresses you might want to wear if you've got a summer wedding to go to. If you saw my last video, you'll know that I have recently attended a wedding um, in Portugal where it was nice and hot and I wanted to show you the dress that I made to wear, obviously as a guest, and I thought I would also show you some of the patterns that I considered as alternatives um, for the same event and um, for one reason or another decided not to make but if you've got a wedding coming up or a bit of a do then this selection might be of interest to you. Um, I am wearing the top that, uh, of the Calvin wrap dress. I, I think it does come as a top as well as a dress, I don't think I hacked it into a top. Um, I've shown you this before, I was originally planning to make the Calvin wrap dress for this event and this was my sort of toile-ish and um, I wasn't too happy with the fit. I have adjusted it, uh, or I did adjust it, and I'm still not 100%. Um, it's okay, but I still, there's something around the top half of this. I just, I don't know, I just don't particularly feel drawn to. Um, however, I did feel it was an improvement on how it was, and I did then go ahead and make a, vers a dress version of this, I will put it on in a sec and show you, but um, I decided not to wear this to this um, to this wedding. Um, and it is also one of the things that I took on holiday with me and didn't wear. Um, so if you saw my last video where I went through all the bits and pieces that I took on holiday, this and this top both came back completely clean and unworn. Let me show you what I did make. And that was this dress here, which is the Smoltron dress from Paradise Patterns. I made it out of this silk viscose fabric from Lady McElroy. Um, I actually bought it direct from Lady McElroy. I didn't even know that you could do that, um, but I was just, because it's quite a simple dress, I kind of wanted it to be in a silky, satiny kind of fabric, just to make it feel a bit more weddingy. And as luck would have it, it was half price. So instead of being 19 pounds a meter, it was nine pounds a meter. Um, and I have to say, ever since I bought it from them, I have had two or three emails now in the intervening, what, three weeks with various discount codes and things so it's definitely worth doing um the only thing i would say is that if you opt for standard delivery it says dispatches within seven days and i would say that's about right i don't think this arrived for seven or eight days and considering i was getting closer and closer to the date we were going away that was a bit hairy i probably should have coughed up for next day delivery it actually behaved really nicely um for things like this front section here is interface and I thought do I really want to be using a fusible interfacing on it but I did a little test and it came out really well and it also pressed pretty well which again with silk you've got to be a bit careful about how much pressing you do it was pretty good. If you look at the line drawing on this it comes as a couple of different options there is an option with a sort of straight over facing and then this one with the V. I particularly like the V. Um, and then two back options, one with a um, bow, which is what I went for, and one with a gathered back. I've just realised there's nobody at home to tie my bow. Okay, this could be interesting when I put it on in a sec. Forgive me if the bow's not looking great. Not a natural bow person, but again, I thought it'd make it look a bit more weddingy. The dress itself is cut on the bias, so I have made mine a little bit longer than the pattern, but you're slightly restricted, or you're completely restricted, by the width of your fabric. You can't just extend, 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 extend because of it, the pattern piece being on the bias. Um, what you can do is add a ruffle to it, and I did that 
it took me the best part of a day because although this fabric was pretty well behaved, it needed a lot of very, very careful handling. It had to be, you know, nice and patient and slow with it. Use those really fabulous silk pins that you can get from Merchant and Mills. Can't remember what they're called. It took me so long and I took one look at it and thought, no, it looked like uh, a nighty from the 1970s and not in a good way because I love things from the 1970s. Uh, so I'm having to take it off again. Anyway, I was quite happy with it in the end. So let me go put it on and uh, you can see what you think of it. Okay, so um, I really love this dress. It is an absolute delight to wear. You can imagine on a really hot summer's day, and you know what weddings are like, you, you know, you're kind of dictated to by the event of the day. You couldn't necessarily guarantee that there was shade. Actually, we did manage to find some shade, but you never really know. And I just wanted to be really kind of loose and comfy. Um, not sure how good a job I have done of this bow. Um, yeah, trying to do it for yourself is not that easy. Um, but I loved wearing it. I really, really, really enjoyed how comfy I felt wearing it. I kind of made this and the Hallon dress that I had talked about in my last video around about the two were sort of going on at the same time. So really between the two patterns, this and the Hallon, it's been my first experience of Paradise patterns and I found the instructions to be really good, really nice. Um, they were available via an Etsy shop. Um, yeah, really, really liked them. I would like ideally to have uh, the front of this Simultron dress with the back, that deep back, gathered back of the Hallon dress. Um, this is cut on the bias and that one isn't. So I'd like to have a fiddle with seeing, I might do a little twirl at some point to see how this would work if you did the front of this on the straight grain with the how on back. Might need some jiggery pokery. Anyway, that's for another day. It definitely, definitely took me longer to sew this dress because of the fabric. You know, it just took a little bit of extra handling, um, you know, just with the, the rolled hem but it, I feel like it was worth it. I felt really, really happy to wear it. Had to do a quick battery change there, but what I was saying before was that I haven't been to a wedding for a long time and I was a bit concerned that people might be in short dresses and I might feel a bit, I don't know, it might just not feel right to have something this midi length. But in fact, it was quite the opposite. Pretty much, I don't think anyone was wearing a shorter dress, pretty much everybody, I guess because of the heat, had chosen something um, kind of midi length or even maxi length and um, obviously lots of different styles of dresses, but pretty much everyone was wearing something longer rather than shorter. And I felt super, super comfortable in, in this. Yeah, really comfy. Um, the only couple of modifications, um, well, only one modification really, and that is the straps. But you might see that I have got an adjustable strap. So using the sliders, I bought a little set of sliders when I did the Calvin wrap dress. And I used the instructions from the Calvin wrap dress just as a reminder for how to have an address, adjustable strap because I'm not always great at getting the length of my straps right and I didn't want it a fixed one and then go out there and then find that I had that kind of strap falling off business like with a top that I made recently. Um, and then in doing that, I also noticed that when I had a look at some of the pictures um, of this dress using the hashtag on Instagram, that quite a lot of the straps that people had made had got a slight twist to them. And that's because the straps are cut on the bias. And when you sew them together, you're sewing with a straight stitch. So the straight stitch obviously doesn't stretch, but the bias does. And so I chose in the end to cut my straps on the straight grain but an alternative would have been to cut them on the bias but use a lightning stitch or a really small 
zigzag just so at least that seam edge would stretch as much as the bias does um, but either way I prefer the adjustable thing because I don't trust my <laughs> don't trust myself to get the lengths right and um, bra wise <laughs> obviously in this case you've got strapless but you've also got the split at the back so it's quite low and you might be able to, you can probably just about see a bit of brass strap there. Um, what I did was I bought uh, an adjustable brass strap thing um, from Amazon that you add to your existing bra and then it sort of wraps around your waist almost like a belt um, so that the bra straps fall lower into a V. When it actually came to it on the wedding day, I wasn't convinced that you wouldn't be able to see the bra, so I just did without. Hey ho. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing that bra, that strapless thing. It works quite well. I'm not sure it would work too well if you had bigger boobs. <laughs> not my area of expertise. So let me, um, I'll quickly show you the Calvin wrap dress that I made and then I will um, have a run through of the other dress options that I was considering before I chose this one. Um, yeah, so I do really like this. I feel like I made some changes to the fit between the pink top and making the dress. Um, and I do really, really like this fabric, but I just didn't love it enough as a dress to wear for the wedding. And um, it kind of got relegated to summer dress. It's kind of weird because I feel like, I don't know, I feel like this is too, um, whatever the opposite of casual is, um, to wear just on a regular day, but not wedding year enough. So I'm hoping I get to wear it. I've got a funny feeling this is going to be one of those dresses that never really gets worn. I don't know. Maybe if I had a barbecue to go to or something, I would wear it. I don't feel like with some wrap dresses where you are constantly concerned that any gust of wind, you're going to be showing your fine china. Um, you know, I feel like this has got quite a good wrap to it. So I think you feel pretty safe and um, pretty safe and secure. Anyway, let's talk about other dress options that I looked at for a uh, summer wedding. And one of them is the Rivlin Ruffle Dress, which is a new pattern from a new sewing pattern designer. Uh, to be absolutely upfront and for clarity's sake, I was given a copy of this pattern for free, but it came with zero strings attached. She said, no, no obligation to mention it or anything, would like you to try it. And I haven't yet tried it, but when I got it, I did think actually it'd be a really good contender for this wedding dress, uh, or guest of a wedding dress, because um, I think there's quite a lot you could do with it. Now, I'm not a natural ruffle person, so um, it has a ruffle down the front section at the bodice, but I've seen versions of it without that. Um, but I really like the design of the front with the sort of straight panel across the, the front and the um, seam lines down the side. And then you've got a tiered skirt, which you can obviously adapt and have as many tiers, have it as short or as long as you like. So I think for a um, similar setup to, to you know the one I was going to, when you want something kind of loose and floaty, this dress could be a really good one and there are you know lots of different ways you could do it there are different ways you could play it and I quite like versatility in a sewing pattern another dress that I looked at is from another French pattern designer and I am not going to be able to pronounce it um, it is called I'm just looking at my um, Trello because I have all my sewing patterns on Trello on my phone it's very handy when you go to a fabric shop um, and you need to know exactly how much fabric you need. Uh, yeah, no way I'm going to be able to pronounce this, but the pattern company is called what looks like Apolline Patterns to me. I don't think that the instructions come in English. She has some really, really beautiful, beautiful sewing patterns. But I do think if you're somebody with a little bit of experience, you could probably 
work it out yourself and if not then there's always Google Translate. I have done this before, I don't speak a word of French, I have uh, made a sewing pattern that was only in French before and it was pretty successful actually, a little bit complex but pretty successful. But I think this one looks really nice. I really like the sweetheart neckline and it has a, a wrap with gathers at the front um, and a flutter sleeve with the um, skirt is sort of semi, I was going to say semi A-line but no it's A-line but it has a seam at the front so you've got a split at the front which you could have as high or as non-existent as you like. It's a really, really pretty, pretty dress and I think, um, again, you could make it as short or as long as you like. Um, I think absolutely perfect for a summer wedding. Um, the other pattern that I seriously considered um, for this, yeah, for this event um, is the Sicily slip dress, which you may have heard of because it has been incredibly popular in the sewing community. It's by, I think she's called Mason, So Mason, I'll put a title. Um, I did end up buying it uh, and I haven't made it, but I did have a quick look at the instructions and looked at some of the reviews and to a T, every single review I looked at said it was really quick to make. Um, so if you have got a last minute event on, this could be a really good one. It's cut on the bias uh, with a really beautiful cowl neck. Um, so a bias cut dress is always going to be very clingy. And if you do make it out of a, a satiny or a silky fabric, like I made with mine, it's not going to, um, it's not always the most flattering if you've got lumps and bumps, which let's face it, most of us have. Uh, but no reason why you couldn't make it out of another drapey fabric, um, you know, or a print is always a bit more disguising of lumps and bumps. Or you just go, do you know what, I don't care, I'd quite like to make a Sicily slip dress. I don't really have a need for one, but I might want one. <laughs> Put that down. Um, yeah, the other pattern that I had considered early on that I did show you a few weeks ago was a McCall's pattern that had a, a wrap and a bow in the back um, and some gathers. Something a little bit more contemporary and possibly a bit casual, but again, depending on fabric choice, is the Rhea dress from Tammy Handmade. Now, I have bought this dress. I'm actually halfway through making one. Um, and yeah, started it yesterday, so I'm halfway through making one. So far, so good. It is yet another dress with a tiered skirt. I don't know about anybody else. I'm a little bit tiered skirt out. Tiered skirted out in the sewing pattern world. We don't need any more tiered skirts, really. Um, but what I like about it in particular is the neckline of the top half. It doesn't have any darts, so it's kind of loose fitting, which again, if you're at a wedding and all that's standing around and you're in the heat, nice and comfy. But I think the neckline on it is really, really pretty. It has a kind of curved neckline at the back and you can make it either with a, it's another one with a, a strappy strap. Um, you can either make it with a fixed strap or you can do um, tie straps. And I think that looks like another really good wedding dress option. So those are the ones I looked at. Um, if you have recently been to a summer wedding or some kind of summery event where you needed a posh frock um, and you've got a suggestion of a really good dress, please put it in the comments below because I know other people will see it. And if anyone else is looking for that kind of thing, if you have a look through the comments, there might be some really good suggestions there. It'd be really, really useful. Not sure <laughs> what I will be back with, but I'm sure I'll be back with something. And thank you very much. Thanks for all your comments and all your support. I will see you soon. Bye bye.